Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna take you over there and uh, show you what Danny's been doing. He's been working on the funny car cage in Cletus's Eagle. It's definitely the biggest funny car cage in the most room we've ever had to put in a 69 Camaro. And it's been a little challenging, but he definitely has enough room now, which is what we have to do. Let's go over there and check it out. We're over here with Danny and we're gonna go over a little bit of what he did today on a funny car cage. We'll put a time lapse in there, but first explain to him what you did today. Okay, today started out this far. It looks nice and simple, but it's one of those bars again where you have two points. It's not fixed into a corner, so it's easy to just kind of lay it in there. But it has to be a certain width, otherwise it doesn't conform real good because it's heavy tubing. It's the inch and five eight stuff. Plus, it had to land. These bars were the same angle as our seat, and so they had to just had to land in these bars and here and there kind of like all at the same time. So to make that bend pretty much like you want it, we have a jig. And this thing is invaluable for doing the bar that goes all around the back on top of the four link brackets. Same, same, we use the same jig. All I do is put a lot longer tube in here. But what this is, is an inch and five eighths bend with a six inch die. These notches don't mean anything, they're just, there to help you kind of locate it on the tube. They're not what you're going to be using for angles. So we took this and put it in the car and shortened it, lengthened it till we got it to lay on those two points pretty close. You can move them a little, but not much. And lengthwise, I just sat this in those tubes and added like an inch on each side just so we have plenty of metal to notch too. And then I go over to the bender and we have a bend line right here on each one of these tubes. That is where when these 90s were bent, that's the beginning of the die. So what you do is you, make, you figure out how long you want to make your bar total. You find, if, the, if they're going to be equal length, you just find your center. If they're not, you see how much longer that's going to be. Just wrap a tape around it. That'll give you a long measurement, which is good. And then you mark these two marks on your tubing. Go to the bender, put them in the bender on that mark make your 90. Then you come over here, put it in the other way, make your 90. You can get a measurement from outside to outside, and then you check what you just bent when you have 90 exactly. And like I said, you can move them eighth of an inch, quarter inch if you have to, to make everything work. And once you get that made, then it goes over there, and then it's a process of seeing what angles are gonna be. The outside is easy to determine. The inside is not as easy and you just always notch shallow. So if you think you're gonna have to have a 50 degree angle, you start notching at about 45 or 42. Because you can deepen the notch and not shorten your two, but if you have to make the angle less, you're gonna shorten the tube every time and now if that's a problem, that tubing's no good. So that's what we did. We copied this, went over there, and then just started notching it, notching it until they landed in those two uh, diagonals that went up. And uh, it took a little time, but the product was good. It came out real good. Everything's nice and level, everything's nice and square. And then we started working with the uh, 20 car bars that go up over your head. We have the first one done, a little more complicated than the next because it starts into the curve of the main hoop. So your notch is not a, not a square notch. It's in the roll of the tube. So you gotta, again, kind of eyeball where the center is in that curve and start making your notch. And sometimes you gotta adjust a little bit. That's why you have extra tubing. And this bar doesn't fit until it's almost there. It will not go in. And once it goes in, you better be close. Otherwise you'll be making it fit notch wise and making a new bar a little longer. So anyway, it turned out rather well. We got as maximum clearance as we can get height 
and I mean max. Something else to talk safety, a lot of people asking about this. This is one of the biggest areas uh, that needs to be safe, the funny car cage part of the car. Uh, if something happens, you're rolling around, that's what's really gonna keep, keep it from collapsing on you, basically. So something we do that a lot of other people don't do, some of these tubes can be inch and a half. Uh, the inner tubes, uh, back of the funny car cage, I believe, and that inner tube right there that, that bends around can be inch and a half. We don't do that. We run inch and five eighths just because it's not worth uh, saving a, a pound or whatever it is. So there's a lot of places we save as much weight as we can. In some places we don't. The funny car cage area is not one of them. Also, this big open hole here gets a three quarter tube uh, wrapped around all the way around. And that's all that's required there. Something else we do in that area that nobody else does and it's not needed is the bar that you can see on this car that goes there. That bar is not needed, but we add it just because it's, uh, it's safer. There's a bar right in this area, right about here. Yeah. And it follows the same profile as the main hoop. So it won't just be all the way in here. It'll start here and it'll bend out, come down, and then just at the very bottom, you'll just kick in and go down to that bar. Yeah. Another complicated bar to notch because it either goes and fits or it doesn't fit. But it makes, it, it just makes, that looks like way too wide open. Yeah, well, you'd never have a problem with your head necessarily coming out. Obviously, all the, the spacing is, is small enough where your head wouldn't come out. But if you ever had a problem, this thing was sliding on the side and it hit something and the corner was there, you would want that extra bar there. Yeah, it's so. a smaller diameter bar than the inch and five eighths. You yeah, can, we do inch and a quarter, inch and a half. We inch and three eighths. Yeah. It just doesn't have to be there. It's not a spec bar, but when you have a lot of distance in here, I think it, it looks better and it's functional. Yeah, I agree. Got to have it. Oh, yeah. So that's pretty much it for these bars that he got added today. We'll be finishing this up tomorrow. And that's what's coming up next. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to go check out our merch. We have some pretty cool designs. And this week until Memorial Day, we have 10% off our entire site. So it's a good time to get some merch. And thanks for the support. Back over here with Danny. We just got the last eye bar tacked in the funny car cage, and I'm going to let him explain to you what he got done today. And uh, funny car cage is just about done. Pretty close. Okay, started out these two bars up here. I did the outer one first because it's a little bit harder. Because as you can see, to center everything up in the car with the driver and the seat and everything, this bar lands right starting into this curve. It's not much, but it's enough that notches are different. And so we, I fitted this one first. Everything turned out pretty good with that. So the other one is pretty much a mirror image, but the notch is just different up there. But I take angles off of this and off of this and get them the same, space them apart equally, tack them in, adjust what we have to. So we put these in. And once these were in, then I did this bar. This bar... We've pretty much followed the same shape as the main hoop. The radius is slightly different because of the tube being smaller diameter. Our, our die is a little bit less, but you don't really see it. So we kind of keep the same profile coming down. And then here we kick it down like the main hoop comes down. Move it out to where it's in a good location this way. Back that bar in. Okay, then we determine where we were going to put this and we kind of you run a little bit of an angle because it just follows the flow of things a little bit better. So we set this bar where we wanted it to be. And then this bar is another one. It's kind of one of those double capture bars, which I can't get away from for the last few days. Uh, you fit this to where it lands in the center of this tube and it lands where it needs to be here. You also have to take into account up here that it's not drooping or above. It's a little complicated. What we kind of do is we have a, 
piece of angle. This isn't the one I used. This one's a little bit narrower. The one I have was a little bit wider. That will go around this tube and up to this tube. So let me just get the real one. We take this bar. Once we have this where we want it and we tack it, put this up like that, just put a clamp on it. Now this one is going to lay right on this, right in line. And then once once you get this all fit really good, you keep clamping it, making sure it's everything you want. Once you get everything's good, then you start tacking it, making sure this is square, making sure it's level across the top. Once we get this bar and this bar in, then we go ahead and put this one in, three-quarter bar. We just center it top and bottom with a one-inch bar, level it all out. And then this one here is really not super hard to do other than... In the situation we're in here, it's just hard to get in and out of this car to make it fit. And it's another one of those double capture bars where I make 9,000 trips to the notcher. But got to do it. You're probably wondering what this thing is up here. Well, we want these bars to be level height-wise on this bar here. So what we do, we clamp it up against the bottom of this bar as close as we can. If there's a little gap like this one is because of a weld right down here, compensate for that. And then over here, since it's a smaller tube, we raise that just a little bit, but we get it so it's parallel across here. Clamp it up. That way, when you're fitting this tube, you once you get it close, you can just sit the tube in there and just lay it right on the straight edge. There's no, no ifs, ands, or buts where it's going to go this way. So you just keep fitting it that way. And once you get it, again, get it fit, get it square, get it ready to go. Then tack it in, double check it, and that pretty much does it for the funny car cage as far as bars go. It turned out good, it turned out real good. It's one it's of big. the hardest things to do in the car. Yeah, yeah, funny car cage got some, some tricky stuff to make it look right. Oh, you got to make it look, it's got to look, you know, good. it's, it's functional, right. but it's got to be symmetrical. Yeah, if it's be. not, people look at you, see bars going this way and bars going that way, and no, that's not going to happen. No, no work. No, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> One of the biggest differences uh, with this car than we normally do is the seat is leaned back. How many degrees does the seat lean back on this? It's about 50. Seat is at 59. And normally we go 70. Between 72, 75. We're at our so, yeah, so there. that's where Cletus wanted a seat. That's where he's comfortable. Uh, so that's where it's at. So it leaned back quite a bit more than our normal seats, which uh, pushed this bar back pretty far. We also obviously lowered the seat a bunch more than normal. And you can see this tube has zero room. There's no more room in this car. So if you want a 69 Camaro, that's the most room you're going to get. It's definitely tougher uh, than we thought it was going to be. We kind of accounted for Danny plus some, and we fit it originally. Not, not final fit, but we had the seat sitting in there when he came, and it was tight. So we moved it quite a bit since then. And... Uh, now it's good to go. I don't know if we're going to do the piece of elliptical tubing tomorrow or are you going to move on to something different? That one there, I'm going to put in whenever I pop the roof off of this thing. Yeah, so probably which is tomorrow. Not hard to do, but I, it can come off and it can go right back on. Tomorrow but we'll probably do the A pillar bars. That's Once probably bar. what I need to start is the A pillars and get that done. So we'll be doing a tube that goes from here back to there, both sides, the windshield bar. And once those bars are in, the outline of the body is done. So we could take the roof off with these Clecos, which would be really easy. Just pop the roof off, maybe take the quarters off. Then you can do the uh, roof X, gussets, door Xs. We can pretty much finish everything without the body on at that point. Yeah, once we get the eight pillars and the roof bar, like you said, the roof comes off. Yeah. And then I can get up there and put all the X bracing in the roof and all the gussets and do all that. We'll just yep. be standing in here working on it. Yep. Easy to get to. But our eight pillars, some people, if they want to be really quick with it, they'll just come off of here with the tube. And they'll just run it right straight over to here, and they'll bend it, and they'll run it right straight down to here. It won't follow the angle of this, and it will be too far inside, which is not good. So what we do is we bring the tube out here, and we just give it a slight kick in right there. It comes out, and it'll run along here, and then when it gets here, it turns, and it'll run right down the A-pillar. But when it gets here, as you can see, it goes outside the dash bar. So somewhere around here, there's a little bit of a bend, and it goes straight down to here. And all those little bends, they're tricky. 
but it makes a much better, cleaner looking job when it's all done. You can look into the side of the car and even these are so thin, you won't hide the bar totally, but you're not going to see only but about half of the bar going yeah. up that. Yeah, we definitely try to make the tubes fit the car the best we can. We don't want to make it look like it was a chassis for an Opal and we put a 69 Camaro body on it. So that's the plan for tomorrow, and uh, we'll update you guys again in a few days. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share.